Hello and welcome to another book talk at the Massanutt Regional Library. My name is Miss Stephanie, one of the children's librarians here, and today I'm going to be discussing a few books related to music. And these are all young adult books, as you can see here. And the first one is called Swing by Kwame Alexander. And if that name sounds familiar, he actually did win the Newbery Award a few years ago for his book, The Crossover. And I'm pleased to say that this book is just as interesting and fun as that one was. This one is more focused on music, though, in addition to sports. And it tells the story of Noah, who has a crush on his friend Sam. And he's very torn up about it. His fr be other best friend, Walt, who's nicknamed Swing, which is the title of the book, tries to help him by giving him podcasts on love and giving him a steady diet of jazz music, but Noah's still pretty not sure what to do until he finds some love letters in a thrift store, and those inspire him to write his own love letters, but he's too scared to tell Sam how he feels, and so he just feels like he's stuck in the friend zone, but he can't take it anymore, and he sends them to her anonymously, and this book does a great job of just like kind of sorting through all of Noah's complicated thoughts, his friendship with Walt, and there is some tensions going on in his town, which kind of expose some racial tensions there as well. And what I like about this book is, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of poetry, but I really like the free verse style. It's just like very fluid and smooth. It's a unique way to just kind of tap into just like, you know, teenage love. And also it's just nice because like, as I mentioned, I'm going to mention it a bit, like, it seems like a big book, but it goes by a lot faster because each page just has, like, a different verse of, well, of Noah's thoughts in it. And I will say that the ending is a little abrupt. Um, I kind of didn't see it coming so quickly, but it's still a really good book, a really enjoyable and unique read. And I'm actually going to show you some examples of the love letters that Noah wrote to Sam. It's kind of a mixed media art style. So let's, let's take a peek. Okay, I'm just going to show you a few examples of Noah's mu mixed media love letters. And the first one is right here next to a poem that he wrote called X-Man after the Marvel Comics. And as you can see, it's a very unique, like he puts the words, but he has a drawing of a boat and a moon. And I just like it because it's just very, it's just a very unique way of expressing poetry. And another thing that you notice through this book is that it's like, it's not a full page, even though this book is 400 pages long, since the free verse style is just a little bit on each page, it goes by a lot quicker than you would originally think by looking at it. And let me just show you one more picture. And here's another poem that Noah wrote through the book. And like, he uses the shapes and he uses the words and it just like, it's just a very unique thing. And as you can see, as we're talking about music during this book talk, you could see that he uses the sheet music in the background as well. So yes, like that's definitely a, another solid winner from Newbery Award winner, Call Me Alexander. So let's move on to the next book. All right, moving on to the next book is, this one is called Symphony for the City of the Dead by M.T. Anderson. And this book is set in World War II Soviet Union Leningrad, which is modern day St. Petersburg. And this basically tells the story of composer Dmitry Shostakovich and he was a, a very famous composer, one of the most famous ones in the 20th century Soviet Union. However, he was living during the siege of Leningrad where Hitler's forces were invading and it was causing all sorts of chaos and like there were so many dead people that the cemeteries couldn't bury them. They were just thrown into the street. It was during winter, people were burning stuff, like their books, their furniture, their even their valuable photos just to keep warm. It was a very grim time in their history and over a million Soviet citizens died during the siege. And it's not a lighthearted book, I will admit, but it is a really inspiring and powerful story uh, because Shostakovich's not only did he have to deal with the invading Nazi forces, he had to also deal with pressure within his own government through one of the worst dictators in world history, Joseph Stalin, who often censored his work. But despite all this pressure, despite his fear for his family, his life, he composed a great symphony during this time called the Leningrad. And this symphony just kind of was like really beautiful. It just conveyed like all the struggles but the hope that his people, the Soviets, would persevere during the siege and they would live on through it and they would not let the Nazi forces basically get them down. And I just think, 
like I said, not a lighthearted read, but a very fascinating, like, I couldn't put it down, to be honest. It just kind of like, and sometimes we don't want to talk about the darker times of life, but actually, through those, we can learn about how people can grow from them to inspire others to work through it, because we're always going to have bad times and uncertain times in history, and we can respond to it in different ways. And the way Shostakovich wrote it was writing a very inspirational symphony, and this symphony helped inspire the Allied forces in some unexpected ways, but I will let you read the book to f find out what those ways are. And before I wrap up this book, let me show you a few interesting pictures that I found in it of historical events during Shostakovich's life. Okay, I'm just going to show you some of the historical pictures of this of World War II that Anderson put in his book. And the first one is the top is a picture of Shostakovich and his family. And then at the bottom, we can see a young Joseph Stalin, um, someone that unfortunately Shostakovich lived in fear of due to his censorship of his music. Then moving along a little bit, this is a map which shows the Allied and the um, Operation Barbosa where Hitler was sieging Soviet Union, and you can just see, like, the different countries, like, who was in the Allied powers and who was in the Axis powers. And then the last picture I want to show you is not only did Shostakovich compose during World War II, he also served as a firefighter, and I just thought that that just added a new dim another dimension to his character because he was a very interesting and complicated man. So let's just, there we go. And so Symphony of the Dead. All right, I'm just going to wrap up this book talk by talking about a last book, and it's actually a graphic novel. This one is called Operetta by Kia McClear, and this one tells a story. It follows middle schooler Charlie at the end of her school year, and she's in her music class with Mr. K, and he gives her an, the class an assignment to find their own tune or song because he thinks that there is the perfect song in the whole universe for everyone. And at first, Charlie's kind of wanting to do what her friends are doing, popular music and stuff, but then one day, when Mr. K talks about opera, she hears this beautiful aria, which is what songs are called in opera, and it is by the famous opera singer Maria Callas, and it's just, a, it inspires her, it also helps her to, like, connect with herself and her feelings towards her classmate Emile, and also just trying to figure out what's going on with the mysterious disappearance of her other classmate, Luca, and what I like is, is just basically, it doesn't judge like one music type is better than other, like opera is better than jazz or rock or rap or metal. It talks about how all music can speak to us and we just need to find the type of music that speaks to us. And it's really neat because there's a lot of lyrics from like 60s, 70s, 80s songs, even some like more of um, the 21st century. And it's just like a really good, fun read. And just like, I like Charlie, she's a very likable character in her dealing with her feelings towards Emil, and you eventually find out what happens to the disappearance of her classmate Luca as well. Let me just, um, as with graphic novels, it's easier just to show you than tell you, so let me just show you a couple examples of the artwork in this very beautiful graphic novel. Okay, I'm just going to show you a quick two spreads in this graphic novel. The first one is just a picture of Charlie's friend Emil. And you can see like the beautiful drawings of the butterflies around him as he wants to study insects and bugs. And then the second one is when Charlie is discovering opera for the first time. And it just like, just the illustration, it's not like as clear cut as some graphic novels, it's just more like kind of evocative, like just uh, like kind of more s muted, but it is still very beautiful. And then here's, it just kind of shows how Charlie feels about the opera. So and that's just two examples of a lot of really nice illustrations in this particular graphic novel. All right, thank you so much for joining us for the Young Adult Book Talk today at the Massachusetts Regional Library. I'll be sharing uh, the citations for all these books on the last slide, so if you want to put a hold on them, you can just go online to our catalog and do so. And I look forward to sharing more books with you next month. Have a good day. Bye.